Hey, plant fam! Welcome back to our channel. Yours too. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is Crash. It's not happy right now. And this is our jungle. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be talking about our ficus collection. One of the only plants that you don't eat. But even if you did, I don't think they're technically toxic. It's just the sap that comes out of them has latex in it. So if you're allergic to latex, it's probably not a good plan. I think Hoyas, Hoyas have a similar latexy mist to their sap that comes out as well. Anyway, we're going to put him down. So I'm going to be showing you, dude, stop. Why do cats do that? I have like a box on the floor and he's like wiping it to make noise. I don't know if I'm like really mentally prepared for this right now, you guys. I have a humidifier making humidity. It's also part of the humidifier. Let's turn this down a little bit. It's making noise, no? I don't know, hopefully the microphone's not picking up on it. Ficus collection. So I really struggled with ficus and I was like just Mm, not trying to do it anymore, but right before everything shut down last year, I picked up a really cute, you can see it in the frame a little bit here, Taneki um, Ficus Elastica, and I was like, you know what, screw it, we're going to see if we can keep this thing alive, because before that I had killed two fiddles and one other variety of the rubber tree here. I ended up keeping it more than alive. It's happy and it's thriving and that inspired me to acquire even more ficus. And now that I've sort of figured out what they want from me, I'm able to actually enjoy them. And I have six right here in front of me. Some are easier than others. Some are thriving some are not so I just wanted to go through them with you guys talk about some care tips and just show them to you so this is my ficus collection and hopefully it helps you not kill yours I'm going to start with what I think is the easiest ficus to have in your collection and move down to the hardest so the first one that I ever had was actually the burgundy rubber tree and I ended up killing it which is fine because I learned later down the road that it actually wasn't my fault it was in a really muddy gross soil mix and I didn't realize at the time like how important it was to repot certain plants like almost right away like honestly a lot of the time when you bring a plant home from the nursery, you shouldn't touch it. You should leave it alone, let it acclimate. It's been in a greenhouse. It was probably grown in a greenhouse and now it's in your house, which is not a greenhouse. Usually the best plan is to allow the plant some time to acclimate to your environment. So it's not always a good idea to repot it as soon as you bring it home. But if the plant is in really bad soil or it's just in really bad shape if it's really soggy and you're afraid it might rot and or maybe there's like spider mite webs all over it or maybe you're seeing like fungus gnat larva all in there then by all means girl repot your plant just be careful with ficus they can be a little bit cranky about being repotted i try really hard to just not disturb the roots as much as possible give them a little tickle loosen them up but unless it's like absolutely necessary for you to get rid of all of the soil just leave it you know what I mean just loosen it up and then put it into a larger container with more soil on the bottom and on the sides to allow the roots to have more room to grow so anyway this was the first one that I ever got killed it wasn't my fault the soil was basically mud and the thing just rotted and I had no idea how to take care of it I put it in my south west facing window which is where I keep all of these now so it wasn't the same spot that this one's like literally living in now so it wasn't that it was literally just the soil this is really dry right now so they all are, I need to water them. So I'm gonna do all that with you guys after we talk about them. Yeah, the Elastica. 
they're really thick the leaves they hold on to moisture in there so they're a little bit more forgiving it's okay if they get dried out they like to go completely dry at least for like a day or two you just don't want to leave them for longer than that because you will start losing leaves so you just have to be really careful Letting them go dry will encourage them to grow their roots out more, looking for moisture, but letting it go too dry and you'll start to lose the bottom leaves. They'll start to yellow and fall off. But if you water it too much, then you're gonna have the issue that I had with mine where it just completely rotted. And that happens so fast, sometimes you don't even realize the plant looks totally fine one day and then you wake up the next day and you're like, what happened? It's just completely deflated and so sad. It's really sad when it happens to like cacti and it just like literally looks like somebody stuck a pin in it and deflated it. If you're looking for a ficus that is going to be easy, this is your best bet. As well as I have the, I have the Teneki right here. She's facing the window this way, so should probably rotate her and um my little dude in here you guys a bunch of you said that i should name him miyagi when i asked on instagram and he legit does look like mr miyagi so i never announced it but that was his name so if you're one of the people who suggested it thank you he chills under here he's just enjoying a little smoke yeah, this one, um, you know, with the variegation, you're going to want to give it a little bit more light because they do like bright light, mostly indirect light, but depending on the intensity of the light, it can be direct. So, you know, if it's not a southern facing really intense light, then it can probably handle some direct light. For example, like I said, I'm going to show you exactly where I have these as soon as I put them back. Southwest facing window, they're getting mostly indirect bright light all day long and then they're getting some direct light for varied periods of time as the light kind of like moves across. Oh, he fell over. No, get up Miyagi. I recently repotted her into this cute pot from TJ Maxx or Marshalls for $7.99. It has drainage, super cute. I love this like vanilla looking reminds me of vanilla ice cream yeah so these are gonna be the two easiest in my opinion care wise they're gonna be a little bit more forgiving with the watering so they're pretty good ficus to get your feet wet so to speak just don't let them have wet feet because they're they're not gonna like it oh i have this one too i have a ruby which is pretty much the same as the taneki just the leaves um stay more pink it's hard to tell because she's still pretty little but her leaves stay more pink in the margins and she's she's a little on the sad side she needs a little bit of loving she needs a little bit more light you could tell she's not getting enough the leaves are coming in kind of little and not very variegated and they're leaning so <laughs> it's fine so these you have lots of different varieties to choose from. There's also just like a regular green one that you could get. And yeah, I would recommend them as like your first ficus to, to try and not kill. Because if, if I can keep all three of these alive and growing, you could do it too, girl. Say the next one that I have that is probably the easiest is my ficus audrey i know that there's a botanical name for it i think it starts with a b but i don't know how to say it so we're just gonna call it audrey because it's cute it's a cute name for a really cute plant that i'm hoping will be a tree one day you guys would have seen me repot her in a video a while back when i did my like little review of the becca de la tanks um soil mix and i put her in here she's been pretty happy in here ever since the color has changed on her pot from like I guess whatever's in the soil I have no idea but it's okay she's still cute and she hasn't done anything she still hasn't put out any new growth but I mean her leaves are really big 
Like, look at how big that leaf is. It's like the size of my head, my face. I don't know why I feel I need to always put my plants in my face. We're just waiting for her to do something. So I water her. She's happy. She hasn't dropped a leaf. They're kind of fuzzy, so you have to, like, make sure you clean them pretty often because they attract a lot of dust. I love the way the stems turn white, and when it kind of grows into, like, this will grow into, like, a pretty massive tree. I just love the contrast of, like, that whiter like stem and trunk on a tree against the green foliage plus it's fucking fuzzy like who doesn't want a fuzzy tree even the underneath of the leaves is beautiful so we're just hoping that she grows eventually because she is beautiful it's hard for you to see her how beautiful she is without me spilling soil everywhere <laughs> But I just, I really just want her to be like a big tree one day. Be able to say like, yeah, I've been growing that for X amount of years. Like it used to be this little baby and now it's a big tree. So I don't know. There's something that is just like really exciting in that for me. And that's one of my favorite things about being a plant parent and collecting plants is that you can start out with just like one leaf and then years from now you can have a tree it's crazy even though the audrey um she's she's definitely maybe a little bit more thirsty her leaves are a little bit thinner so i feel like i do tend to want to give her like a little sippy sip right before I like do full-on waterings sometimes like what I'm going to show you in a little bit is not what I always do every single week because I do water these every like seven to ten days depending on each individual plant you know obviously one is smaller than the other some of them are in different soil mixes and different pots so they do have slightly different needs but I try to keep them on a similar schedule so I don't always pull them all out and and put them in the shower like I'm gonna do and water and, and fertilize them and everything um, sometimes I just go around with my watering can and I just give them a nice thorough drink because they're all in pots that you know can catch the water or have drainage and I have it set up so that I can water them at least a little bit a sippy sip I say just to at least keep them going for another like five days or so until I can get to a nice thorough water so that's not something that I recommend doing unless you're an experienced plant parent, but I've just gotten to know these plants well enough to know that they enjoy a little bit of a sip in between waterings, especially if I'm going to be stretching those waterings further than 10 days apart. You understand what I mean? I hope that makes sense, but please, if this is a plant that's new for you, just be consistent with your watering. Don't go getting on crazy with your watering schedule like I do girl because like I don't know it's a it's a thing that you can't teach almost because you just kind of have to learn it yourself and I call it plant intuition knowing how to understand what your plants are trying to tell you how to communicate with your plants they'll tell you if you know your ficus like I can usually just touch the leaves and be like yeah she can use a little sip or oh no she needs like a really thorough soak so just be consistent with your watering at first until you get to know your plants is all I'm saying but if you're like me and you've been doing it for a while then you do you boo you know whatever works I just don't want to be responsible for y'all over watering your plants and then come back here and be like oh my god Jacqueline you told me to give it a sippy sip and then it rotted f you because I'm just trying to help you know Anyway, the next plant or ficus that is kind of a finicky little bitch is my ficus altissima. I mean, like, look at her. She's so, she's just so stinking cute. She's got that really subtle dark green variegation. But let me tell you, she needs to be repotted too. She's like coming up out of the soil. I got this one at Rosedale for $12.95 from Emma's too. So like it was grown well, it was treated well, grown by my favorite growers, sold by my favorite nursery, 
and I brought it home and it was totally fine until like a week later all the leaves dropped off of it and I was like okay girl like I have all these other ficus and then and they're doing fine and you're over here just like nah I'm out girl bye I don't, I don't really get it maybe there's something wrong with it oh there's definitely spider mites on it oh snap oh I don't know if you can see you guys that webbing in there I noticed this damage on the leaves and then you can see that webbing okay that could also be part of it if your plant is not doing well and you can't seem to figure out why and you don't see pests look a little bit closer take your cell phone light even like at night and look really close at your plants especially in between and if you see a little webbing like that girl you got spider mites because that will definitely make your plant really unhappy and you won't be able to figure out why sometimes until you find the spider mites I've had them on plants for what felt like months and months before I noticed that they were even there so I definitely know that I have them floating around in here they're not hard to kill so I just try and stay on top of it I'll show you guys how I do that when I go and water this because like it's not that big of a deal but if left they will kill your plant so obviously everything came back she regrew she's she just hasn't done anything in a while she's got a bunch of growth points coming out like on her trunk or her stem whatever but she's been kind of a pain in the ass and and i i do think it's the thinner leaf ones that can be a little bit more challenging but the spider mites aren't helping either so we're gonna put her over here. We should probably check them all and make sure they're all good. Um, yeah, I see some more webbing on here. So we're gonna treat them all for spider mites apparently, and this is gonna be a spider mite video. Who knew? Last but certainly not least, in my collection, and in probably everybody else's, the most common ficus you're used to seeing, they're everywhere, is the fiddle, right? We all know the fiddle leaf fig the ficus lorata i'm pretty sure this one that i have here is a bambino which just means that it's kind of like a more dwarfed variety the leaves are rounder but i'm not 100 percent sure it's hard to tell at this point in time because it wasn't really labeled specifically as one or the other it's just labeled as fiddle leaf fig this is my fiddle I brought her home and I didn't know if she was gonna love me or not because I've killed a few of these before. I knew better this time to put her in a brighter window and to make sure she doesn't go super dry because she doesn't like it. She, like other ficus, definitely will want to be dry for a very short period of time, but that's it. If you are inconsistent with your watering with this plant, you are going to lose leaves and lo and behold she popped out like these two new ones a few months back she hasn't done anything since then um i don't see any spider mites but it helps if you hold it up to the light like i am and then i'm kind of trying to look through and see if i see any webbing sometimes you'll see them too they literally just look like little baby spiders but they're they're not spiders so don't freak out um, they're totally harmless they're just a pain in the ass so this is definitely gonna be the most finicky ficus if you get one I mean I know there's like some even like thinner leafed ones like the triangularis and like the umbelata was pretty popular in the nurseries a couple months back they had them they're definitely like more thirsty if you miss a watering on those they will drop their leaves so quickly so my only advice to you with this is if you're gonna get one of these don't pay a lot of money for it get a small one put it in a bright window and learn just use it as a, a, a learning tool and have zero expectations for it because <laughs> that's what I did with this one and it's doing fine I don't want to jinx it girl don't start going crazy on me some people like to shake them 
Why am I shaking my Vegas? Okay, apparently it's supposed to imitate like wind so that it can like be stronger. I don't know. I'm just out here like shaking my Vegas. Like it's fine. So I am going to move all of these into the shower, spray them down, and then we're gonna water, fertilize everything. These girls are getting like the full spa treatment today. I need a fucking spa treatment. Your girl is exhausted. Can you tell? I'm like, I feel like I'm in rare form in these last few videos. Anyway, let's go to the bathroom where I'm gonna have to set up a ring light or something because the lighting in there, oh man, it is awful. Okay, so I am in the bathroom with my plants. And what I'm gonna do is mix up some neem oil, some soap and some warm water and I'm going to spray down these plants because girl we do not have time for spider mites to be stealing our joy okay okay so I hope that you can hear me because I had to take the microphone out it doesn't fit on top of the <laughs> phone when I put it into the ring light like this so I have my neem oil and my water and my soap I'm gonna shake it and then I'm just I'm gonna take my plants and I'm gonna spray them making sure that I'm getting in between all the cracks here where I see the webbing and stuff I'm not gonna go crazy spraying the leaves too much maybe the backs of them because the neem oil can be kind of a pain in the ass to wipe off sometimes you definitely want to make sure you're getting all of the oil residue off before putting your plants back into the sun because it could burn them or you just get like some built up that's really gross sometimes too so you definitely want to be conscious of that and that's another reason why I don't really like to use too much of it. Hi, my head's really big in the frame right now that's scary okay. I'm gonna give these all a good spray down focusing on the areas where I know that the spider mites like to hide and that's really it nothing exciting about it okay so while my plants are sitting with their neem oil on with spider mites it's not that imperative in my opinion to leave it on for a really long time because you can honestly just blast them off with water i use the neem oil just as kind of a precaution to kind of like sounds really bad but like suffocate the spider mites it's not that imperative to leave it on for that long if it was mealybugs I would leave it on for longer just because I like to make sure that I'm actually really killing the bugs so that way when I go to rinse the plant off they come off pretty easily um, but with spider mites they're pretty easy to get rid of you just they're a pain in the ass really is all it is because they keep coming back so you just have to keep staying on top of it but I'm gonna let them sit for a little while and while I do that, I have my other watering can that I use that this one is specifically just for fertilizer. The other one that I have in my room is just for water. So I am using the Espoma Organic All Purpose. This was actually surprisingly hard to find. I ended up finding it at a local nursery and snagging it because you really only need a little bit. So this bottle does go a long way. What I'm gonna do is just pop it open and simply just kind of tip it over. One, two, Ugh, it smells, smells terrible. They call it easy dose because you're literally just supposed to like pour it over and that's like one, two. The directions say shake well. Prior to use, add two to three doses per gallon of water. I don't know how much water is in here. I don't think it's even a gallon, maybe. But it's fine because we only used two doses. Thoroughly drench the soil around the plant. Repeat every two to four weeks throughout the growing season. Right. So I don't actually know how much water goes in here, but I'm going to fill this smells terrible with warm well this smells worse than neem oil to me I think I'm used to the neem oil because I've been using it in like skincare blends for a long time 
but I'm gonna add warm water to this. I'm sure it's better than fish emulsion, obviously, because like what could smell worse than fish in your plants? <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna fill this with water and then show you how I go about the process of actually doing this because it's I guess it seems straightforward, but there's always questions. So I'm gonna let you just watch me do it. Okay, you guys, so these plants have been sitting in here with the neem oil on them for, you know, at least 10 minutes now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the shower on, let them rinse, and then I have my microfiber cloth. So I'm just gonna go through and like gently wipe down each leaf and make sure that I'm really cleaning it thoroughly. This is gonna help me make sure that I'm not only getting all of the spider bites and all of the webbing out, but like I said, I'm getting all of the neem oil off of the leaves because you really don't want that residue building up on your leaves and you definitely do not want to be putting these back out into the direct sun with neem oil on their leaves. <laughs> You definitely want to make sure you're careful when you wipe down these leaves and um, you can tell I'm putting my hand here and then I'm wiping the opposite side so I'm supporting the leaf as I wipe it. Putting my hand under and then I'm wiping the top and then I'm just going to do the opposite for the bottom. You want to make sure you're really wiping it down good, even the stems and all of that, the petioles. Okay, so now that they have all been thoroughly watered, wiped down, I am going to add my fertilizer. I watered them thoroughly already, so I'm just topping it off with the fertilizer. And this is probably one of my favorite things to do, honestly, is just to go around and water them all it's like very oddly satisfying so that's like really it you guys nothing else exciting going on here I'm gonna go on ahead and let these drain and then I'm gonna put them back and I will show you exactly where I keep them okay you guys so this is my southwest facing window and as you can see it's where I keep most of my ficus, some of them are on this shelf down here underneath it, but majority of them are getting this nice afternoon sun. It's only 1130 right now, so the sun hasn't actually come in through this window yet, but you could see they're getting some really nice bright indirect light right now. When the afternoon sun shifts over into this window, they will get some bright direct light for a short period of time. So, yeah, I mean, if you were wondering, these are the conditions in which I keep my ficus. That's basically it, you guys. That is my ficus collection. Okay, fam, so that is it for this video. If you liked it and you want to see more like this, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. And I hope I see you guys in the next one. Bye!